Hey guys, it's Sharon and today's video is going to be all about how to use Dijkstra to solve coding questions. I highly recommend you watch uh, my Dijkstra video before this one. I explain how the algorithm works and I write the boilerplate code that we're going to use in this one. We're going to solve two different lead code questions. I'm going to put uh, timestamps, so if you're only interested in one of them, you can easily just skip to that part. Okay, so let's get straight into it. The first question is network time delay. It has a medium difficulty level, but if you know Dijkstra well, it becomes really easy. So let's read the description. You're given a network of N nodes labeled from one to N. You're also given times, a list of travel times as directed edges, where UI is the source node, VI is the target node, and WI is the time it takes for a signal to travel from source to target. We will send a signal from a given node K, return the time it takes for all the N nodes to receive the signal. If it is impossible for all the end nodes to receive the signal, return minus one. Okay, so basically we have a weighted directed graph where the weights represent travel times. And we're also given this uh, source node, node K, and we're asked to return the uh, minimum time that it would take to reach all the end nodes from the source node. It doesn't actually say minimum time, but we can assume that signals can travel in all directions at the same time, which means they will reach every node in the shortest amount of time possible. So if you think of times as distances, this becomes an obvious shortest path problem, and we can use Dijkstra to solve it because all the weights are larger or equal to zero. And again, it doesn't say that in the description, but travel times can't really be negative values. We can't go back in time, right? So we can assume that all the weights are larger or equal to zero. So let's say we ran Dijkstra on this graph with the source being uh, node K, node two in this example. Dijkstra will return an array that contains for each node the minimal time it takes to reach it from the source, from node K, right? Uh, so the minimum time to reach node uh, two from itself is zero, obviously. The minimum time to reach node one from node two is one. You just need to pass this edge. Uh, same goes for node three. And the minimum time to reach node four is uh, three because it's faster to go this route uh, instead of going directly like this, right? Now, our output should be the minimum time to reach all the nodes. And that is actually the maximum value between these minimal times. We can guarantee that after three seconds, we will have reached all the nodes because if we visualize our signals, it will look like this. At time zero, we will send the signal from node two. After one second, we reach both node one and node three. After two more seconds, we also reach node four. In total, that is three seconds, which is exactly uh, this value. If we limit ourselves to anything less than the maximum, like two, for example, we will not be able to uh, reach this node in time. So three is the minimum that is required to reach all the nodes. By the way, if we had an unreachable node like this one, its mean time would be infinite because we will never be able to reach it. So if our mean times array contains an infinity value, we can return minus one. So just a short recap on the algorithm, we first find the minimum time to reach every node using Dijkstra. Then if any of these times is infinity, we return minus one. Otherwise, we return the maximum value in the mean times array. Okay, so we have the algorithm, now we're ready to write the code. So let's start by copying the Dijkstra code that we wrote in the last video. And we also need the graph class to generate a graph from a list of edges. So as you remember, this uh, dist array will contain the minimum distance for every node. That is what we want. We also have this uh, priv array which is used to reconstruct the path itself. In this case, uh, we're only interested in the distances so we can get rid of it. And that is basically all you need to do to the Dijkstra function. Basically no modifications, we can just use it as is. Now back to our main function, we first have to construct the graph from this uh, list of edges. We can use our graph implementation to do that. And then we get the mean times array from uh, Dijkstra and we loop over our nodes. They are labeled from one to N. If the current time is int max, that is how we represent infinity. Uh, it means that we have an unreachable node, so we return minus one. Otherwise we keep updating the maximum and we turn this max value in the end. And that is it, let's try this. Okay, so that is a success and the complexity of this algorithm is going to be the complexity of the Dijkstra implementation, uh, which is O of V plus E log E. We did the complexity analysis in the previous video, so if you're interested in more detail, you can watch that. 
let's move on to the next question. The next one is going to be path with maximum probability. And this one is also labeled as a medium difficulty, and it does require a bit more modifications than the previous one, uh, but it's still fairly straightforward. So let's read the description. You are given an undirected weighted graph of n nodes, represented by an edge list where edge i is an undirected edge connecting the nodes a and b, with a probability of success of traversing the edge success probe i. Given two nodes start and end, find the path with the maximum probability of success to go from start to end and return its success probability. If there is no path from start to end, return zero. Your answer will be accepted if it differs from the correct answer by at most uh, this number. So let's look at an example. So we have this graph and the source node is going to be node zero and the target node is node two. So there are two ways to get from zero to two. We can go directly like this or we can go this way. So the probability of the first way is going to be 0.2, right? There's just this edge. And then the probability of the second way is going to be 0.5 multiplied by 0.5, which is 0.25. And we want the maximum probability, so we're going to return 0.25. Now, this is a bit different than obvious shortest path problems, right? For one, it looks like we need the maximum instead of the minimum. Well, the easiest way to swap maximum with minimum is to negate all the values. By doing that, we basically reverse the sorted order of the values, so the maximum becomes the minimum. So if we negate all the costs, we will have to find the minimum cost path, and that fits Dijkstra better. Another difference between this question and plain shortest path problems is that the cost is defined as the product of weights instead of the sum. And this means we have to modify the way that we compute the cost, and that will be a tiny change, but we do have to make sure that this new definition of the cost is not decreasing if we're going to use Dijkstra. So does the cost of a path always increase or remain unchanged when we add an edge to it? So let's look at this graph. We have these four nodes and the source is node zero, the target is node three. And in general, in this question, the, the weights represent probabilities, right? So they have to be in the range zero to one. Now the probability to reach the source from itself will of course be 100%. Uh, so it will be one, but because we want to negate the uh, cost, it's going to be minus one. Now the probability to reach node one would be the probability to reach node zero multiplied by the probability to pass this edge. So that would be minus one multiplied by 0 0.5, which is minus 0 0.5. The probability to reach node two would be the probability to reach node one multiplied by the probability to pass this edge here. So that would be uh, minus 0 0.5 multiplied by 0.8, which is minus 0.4. And notice that when we added an edge to this path, the cost decreased, right? It decreased from minus 0.5 to minus 0.4. Let's put it on an axis so it's more clear. So we had minus one for the source, and then we had minus 0.5 to reach node one, and then minus 0.4 to reach uh, node two. Now the probability to reach node three would be the probability to reach node two multiplied by the probability of passing this edge here. So that would be uh, minus 0.4 multiplied by 0.3, which is minus 0.12. And if we put it on the axis, we will see that uh, this is again another increase in the cost and the cost will always increase. And that is obviously because uh, multiplying any two numbers in the range zero to one will always result in a smaller or equal number. And because we're negating the values, the result is always going to be larger or equal because it's symmetric, right? We are moving towards zero from the negative side. So the cost will never be able to decrease, which means we can use Dijkstra to solve this. So to recap, all we have to do is modify Dijkstra to use the negation of the costs. Uh, and we do that by initializing the source distance to minus one instead of one. And that will take care of everything. We don't have to do any more uh, modifications to the other weights. And uh, the second modifications we have to do is just modify the cost computation, replace uh, sum with product. So for this one, we're going to need the graph implementation again from the uh, Dijkstra video. And of course, we're going to need the Dijkstra function as well. And this time we're going to need the uh, single target version. Now, in this question, we get the weights in a separate vector. Um, and it's also a double type. So we're going to have to modify the uh, graph implementation a little. Uh, so let's do that. And this, and this, and here. And this is also an undirected graph. So we need to add the uh, opposite edge. Instead of zero to one, it would be one to zero and it would have the same weight. Okay, now for the uh, Dijkstra function, 
Like the uh, previous question, we also don't need the priv array here because we don't need to construct the actual uh, sequence of nodes. We only need the distance value. So we can get rid of this priv array. And in our case, the dist array is going to contain the uh, best probabilities and not distances, right? So it's going to be doubles as well. Also the return type. Now at the beginning, we don't even know if it is even possible to reach any of the nodes. So we have to initialize the dist array to zero because there is a 0% chance of reaching an unreachable node, right? And here, as we said, we want to initialize the probability of the source to minus one because there is a 100% chance that we're going to reach it, uh, but also we want to negate it uh, in order to negate all the costs. So we change it here and also here. And now we want to modify the way that we compute the cost. That is uh, right here. Instead of sum, we wanted to make it a uh, product. And this should also be a double. And the last thing we have to take care of in the Dijkstra function is that this return value is going to be the negation of the cost. And we want to uh, go back to its positive value. So we'll add this. And this should be all the modifications we need for the Dijkstra function. Now let's go to the uh, main function. So we construct the graph with our graph implementation. And we return the output from the Dijkstra function. And that should be it. Let's try this. Yeah, this weight vector is um, a 1D vector, so we don't need this. Okay, let's try this. Looks good. Let's try to submit it. Okay, so we are done with this one. The complexity of this algorithm is going to be the complexity of the Dijkstra implementation. So if you need more detail on the complexity of Dijkstra, you can watch the uh, Dijkstra video. We did a full complexity analysis. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or requests, let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.